We now continue with our conflict process model. We have went through the stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and now we are getting to stage 4 which says behavior and stage 5 which cares about the outcomes of the conflict. So let's see, under the behavior it is an overt conflict so that there is some party's behavior and others reaction. So you see that we are going to talk about some interaction between these two. How do they behave? How do they treat each other? So let's come here. Stage four. This is a, this is a stage about which um, we know the most because here the conflicts become visible. You can see the two people are in the conflict and it is characterized as the process of interaction so that the two parties are really interacting. And how are they interacting? Well, there will be some statements. They are going to talk verbally, then there are going to be some actions and, of course, reactions. So really to remember what happens in stage four, you just can imagine the two parties being involved. So party A and party B, and now they are interacting. Party A does something, let's say some action, and then party B is going to react to that. That is the whole idea of stage four. Now, this conflict in a stage four, there is a sort of a continuum. So we can call it intensity continuum. Intensity continuum, continuum. Because it is about the intensity. On one hand, there can be basically no intensity and no conflict. And on the other extreme, it can be annihilatory conflict. And now you can see what kind of reactions or actions we can have. So actions we have some listed over here. In the worst case scenario, there are efforts to destroy the other party. When we go down with the intensity of the conflict, then there are still a very aggressive physical attacks, threats and ultimatums. And when we are getting really down to a low intensity, there is only a questioning and challenging and at the very end, only minor disagreements. Now, of course, every conflict is going to have some outcomes and that is going to be stage five. So this action reaction game results in some consequences. And there are two kinds of the outcomes. The conflict either has functional outcomes or dysfunctional outcomes. Of course, we would like a conflict to have some functional outcomes, especially when it comes to the organizations, because these improve the quality of decisions they stimulate creativity and innovation and they act as antidote to groupthink and I will highlight this one. If you remember from the previous videos, what is a groupthink? Well, generally when there are groups and let's say, let's draw a group. So this is one person, another, another and one more. And then there is one person that disagrees. What happens because of the groupthink is that um, the, the, there will be a sense for a conformity. So the other members will be pressing on these members who disagrees so that even after the, the member who originally disagreed will be now in an agreement. That's what we call the group thing. And now the functional outcome of the conflict, it is that it acts as antidote to group thing. So it can be really functional and beneficial for us. Of course, there are some dysfunctional outcomes. It sometimes, uh, and let me highlight it, it sometimes, as concluded by researchers, so sometimes can lead to a dissolution of common ties and destruction of the group. However, what is more important that researchers have concluded that it always, that it always lead to a reduced trust and satisfaction of the two parties that have been involved in the conflict and reduced willingness or reduced information sharing. So as you can see, the conflict can be seen within this nice model for which we have went and it ends up in these two stages, the behavior and the outcome stage.